When you tell me so much love and peace to go round, so much love for the whole world on a beautiful day. You're watching Hello Nigeria. You're watching Hello Nigeria. Don't touch the dial. Hello Nigeria. Sit back and relax. Welcome back to Hello Nigeria. We're joined by uh, an amazing guest. Now he's one who's known for his culinary gift. He's the founder CEO of Chef Eros of Cookie Jar and of um, Eros Gourmet and several other amazing work. I get to find out all that he does behind the scene in a moment. We're going to be talking everything food, but not without him telling us his story and his journey. Today we're joined by Tolu Eros, a.k.a. Chef Eros. Hello. 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 How are you? Where is I'm the good. I'm good. Food is at the restaurant. <laughs> <laughs> I was just thinking as you're coming into the studio, you just have these little mice baskets and jar, you know, some cookie jars. You know, to go. certain things don't travel very well. You want to have a full experience. So I want you to come over to Ilea Eros and have the full experience. You are experience. such a marketer. <laughs> Speaking about marketing, I hear that you have a background or you started out, you know, your journey with marketing. Is that No, true? international business management. Oh, really? Mm -hmm. So tell us about, you know, the, the moment, the first moment that you figured out that the kitchen is a place where you love to be and you love to play around with. Chicken, actually. Chicken got me into the kitchen. Um, in university, I had a small business called Chicken Guy, and what I used to do was buy frozen chicken, um, the thighs, and I would season that, pack it in freezer bags, and I will sell it to my students, like to course students. Um, and yeah, that's how I got into the kitchen. Um, but then I also went, my first job was as a bartender. So um, I got a job as a bartender to learn how to make cocktails and just to earn some extra cash, right? Um, and from working at the bar, um, I found the kitchen. And I just thought the kitchen was so much more. Like, at the bar, I felt like it was a bit boring. And the kitchen, there was all sorts of equipment, uh, all this. For me, all these equipments are like, they're like gadgets, <coughs> like toys, right? So I have a ton of so many like different equipments that I don't even use. Like I try to, I try to make use of everything. My mom always cracks this joke about how I just accumulate all these things that I quote unquote use. But um, so yeah, I just found the kitchen really exciting and just the ability to create flavors, you know, to combine flavors, textures, temperatures to create an experience in your mouth um, was just magical for me. Before we speak about the business and the work side of it, mm -hmm. I'm curious about your growing up. What was growing up like for you? How often were you exposed to the kitchen? I'm asking because when a lot of us were younger, there was an erroneous, or oh, pun intended, there was an erroneous, you know, that's erroneous, erroneous, okay, <laughs> yeah, a perception that the kitchen was a place for just the female children and the boys were not allowed as much. Mm -hmm. Now, in some homes, they already knew that, you know, you expose your male child to the kitchen as much as you expose mm. your female child. Mm -hmm. So I wanted to find out what it was like in yours. I mean, for, for uh, I, I, how do I say this without sounding rude? I think that it was, it, it would have been very um, not forward thinking if my parents had said, oh, the kitchen's for the girls only. First of all, they only have one girl. <laughs> so <laughs> it would be a very, like, quiet kitchen, right? Uh, everyone else were boys. And um, there were a lot of boys in the house, so everyone got into the kitchen. I, in particular, didn't really fancy the kitchen that much. It wasn't like, oh my God, I, I want to I wanted be a chef from being a child or anything. It just uh, happened to be my gift, right? Yeah. Um, and so growing up, I grew up in a, a close-knit family. Um, I grew up in Benin City, actually. Um, and my family, um, we used to love to eat a lot. We still do, right? Sunday, Sunday lunch is a big deal for us. Like now, everyone comes to the restaurant for Sunday lunch. But um, back then, we all end up at my mom's house. And it used, it used to be a big deal. Um, Saturday also was, was also like, a, like something like his breakfast, the whole work, some bacon, to sausages, to all sorts of roasts and things. Everyone had their specialty. My specialty was eggs. My brother was the bacon guy. You know, my sister was in charge of all the sausages and any of the meats, you know, things like that. And so that's how I grew up. I grew up around food. We're always hosting people. We're always having people coming over. Um, and 
even when I'm in Lagos, um, because I'm from Lagos State, so even though I, I lived in Benin uh, for the first 16 years of my life, I was always in Lagos for holidays and, and, um, and breaks and then it's a big family and obviously with big family the one thing that everybody is always talking about is what are we eating next very What's true next, like what are we eating next yeah. food and, is true love and we spent a lot of our time at the dining table like my family we're a dining table family like we literally make decisions at the dining table we have meetings at the dining table we fight at the dining table it's like dining table madness <laughs> that's actually a good one dining table yeah. you know bonding so um it wasn't like oh i wanted to be a chef it just happened to be what god had ordained me to be all right now we see that there's a general spike in the interest for or in culinary arts in mm -hmm. nigeria we're seeing lots mm -hmm. of young chefs coming out like yourself and mm -hmm. saying you know this is an area that i'd like to explore mm -hmm. so let's let's look at what it was at the time that you joined the industry mm -hmm. and what it is now in nigeria so at the time when I joined the industry, um, were there any local chefs? Like there were like there were chefs working in kitchens and stuff, but any socially aware, um, I would say celebrated chefs? No. Um, there were a few of us that uh, so what happened was I moved back to Nigeria in 2008. Um, I invested all the money I'd earned from um, Chicken Guy and then some from my mom into a restaurant project called La Saison. In 2009, we bought La Saison. And then, um, shortly after that, a friend of mine who is also a chef right now, Fregs, had come over to the restaurant and he decided he was going to go to culinary school. So he went to culinary school and he came back. And when he came back, um, I had started Cookie Jar. And we basically started pushing this whole um, being a chef is. It's actually cool. a big deal. It's actually cool. It can you can you can live uh, you know a decent life you know, and before we knew it, right now there's like, God, tons. There's tons. So there's no space for new people to come oh, into the space of culinary arts. First or... of all, this is a country with upwards of 120, 140 million people. Right, um, a good majority, or no, a, good, a good amount of those people um, eat a decent meal. Right. Um, there's at least how many million people in Lagos, you know? So there's, there's, definitely, uh, there's definitely room for, for more chefs. Plus, you know, there's so many different types of cuisine that people can cook, you know, that haven't really been explored fully. And there's, there's, there's definitely loads of room. Okay, from your experience now as um, a chef, mm -hmm. or do I say veteran chef in Lagos, <laughs> Nigeria, and in Nigeria? Okay, do we say that, I'm sure that there have been lessons that you learned from moving back and starting your own business mm -hmm. and having brought your business thus far. What would you say are some of the lessons you've learned and you would love to hand over to anybody, an aspiring chef, you know, who's looking to join the industry? So first things first, I always say is quality is king, right? So never ever compromise on quality is my number one thing. I would rather get the best quality and get pe find people who can pay for it than get like do, like substandard quality that can appeal to a majority. That can appeal to a majority. Obviously, if you want to appeal to a majority, what you're looking for is not necessarily reducing your quality, but instead increasing your capacity. So economies of scale comes to play here, uh, and that's where people get tend to mix it up. That they think, okay, I want to, I want to, I, I want a lot of customers. So the, I, what I have to do is use the cheapest of everything. But the cheapest of everything isn't going to keep your customers coming back. It's going to get you the customers for the first time. But are they going to stay and keep buying from you? Not necessarily, because everyone is looking for quality always over quantity. They say they want quantity, but the truth is, if you put a whole lot of shit, sorry, like a whole lot yeah. of rubbish in front of you, you're probably going to want to take one good as opposed to 10 bad, right? And so quality over quantity every time. Quality comes first. The next thing is to obviously keep your eye on your, on your numbers. We are, as chefs, we're very wishful people. Like, we're very creative, we're spontaneous. You know, you always have this urge that you want to buy something new, try something new, uh, without even perfecting what you have, or, like I say, sweating what you have. If you have an oven and your oven isn't at full capacity, why are you buying a bigger oven? If you have a six burner, your six burner isn't used at full capacity, why are you buying a new burner? You know, and so it's very important that you don't just go ahead and, oh, I, I want to open a, I want to start catering or doing, uh, starting, I want to start a food business and I, I think I need all the appliances that, the truth is you don't. 
You can start catering or, or uh, what's it called? You can start a food business with a two burner stove. You don't have to you try don't to have everything to, you don't, you have to. The thing about it is taking your steps gradually as well. So that's even the third thing is, you know, start small, dream big, start small, but grow at a steady pace. I made that same mistake, you know. Um, when Cookie Jar started in 2012, it created a lot of buzz. We grew really fast. In like two years, we we're doing so well, and I thought, oh, it's time to like open all the stores. So we opened a store in Palms, open another store in Lecky, open a store in Admiralty Way. We opened this, we're just popping stores up everywhere. And before we knew it, we found out that we couldn't even manage the stores. And what did we end up having to do? Shut all of them down. You know, that doesn't mean that I have failed. It just means that I've made a mistake and I've corrected that mistake before it became a failure. Cookie Jar is seven years old, it's still standing strong. And th the next thing I would say is never be ashamed of failure. A failure is an opportunity to do something better. So if something doesn't work out right now, it means that you need to try a different strategy and eventually you will get it right. Don't f so you fail once, you fail again, but fail better the next time. Fantastic. And eventually, you would find that you will be passing all the way through. So much nuggets of wisdom you're dropping here. <laughs> and, I, you know, in some way, someone once said to me that failure is not final. Failure is feedback. It is. It's just you taking feedback it and is. looking for what you can do it better. Is. Now, you've dropped so much wisdom, but I want to ask, mm -hmm. what is the foremost thing that doing business in Nigeria has taught you now because there are many people who want to come back there's this new wave of people coming back into the country you know mm -hmm. and saying that you know I'm, I'm coming to, i'm coming home i'm coming to start a business which is great for us as mm -hmm. nigerians but what would you say is the number one thing that doing business in nigeria has taught you patience is everything in nigeria you have to be patient you have to take a breath you have to take a deep breath in fact because people will drive you nuts you know traffic will drive you nuts before you get to work you know, when you eventually get to work, the person you're talking to is not understanding half of the things you're saying. So you have to be really patient um, and you have to constantly keep your eye on the ball. Um, it takes time to get to, to, get to your, your target or your goal, but you have to be persistent. You know, it's not going to happen overnight. It never does. It never you know? does. Everybody... I've been at this for 10 years. Wow. You know, I've been at this for 10 years, and before even then, I was already thinking about it. And I'm not even at my, I'm not even going up to 50% of where I'm trying to get to. There's like, still so much more. There's still so here. much more. But... So if there's anything that anyone should take from this conversation, it is patience. You know, there's mm -hmm. so much, in fact, there's so much to take. Patience is not the only one. There's so yeah, much yeah, there's feedback, a lot. There's and there's a lot. so much wisdom that you've mm -hmm. dropped, and mm -hmm. honesty as well. So thank you very much mm -hmm. for that. Before we let you go, what are your top 10 favorite dishes to make? We have just a few minutes to touch on that. If you were woken up and said, so Lou, go to the kitchen, take everything that, you know, take money, make anything you want the to The first make. thing I'll ask you is, do you have plantain? Ah, <laughs> I love, true Nigeria. I love my <laughs> plantain, right? So, and I, I grew up loving beans. So I would say beans and plantain, first of all. Okay. I'm a jollof rice fanatic. And even at the restaurant, Ilya Eros, we definitely love our jollof rice. Who so is it? Jollof, jollof rice. rice is part of our Nigerian yeah, exactly. plant. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> and there's always this argument about Nigerian jollof, Ghanaian jollof, uh, Senegalese jollof. You know what I did at the restaurant? What? We did a West African jollof. Oh, like, shit. Mishmash of all As of matter of pan African gone. You know, so that's why. <laughs> I actually really like Amala, especially when it's done well. When it's, as they say, fele fele, it's light, light, you know, light and velvety. I love my Amala with begiri and Ewedu and all of that. I don't know so. how people eat Amala with just Ewedu and the stew without begiri. Ah, like, no, it's, not, it's not complete. It's not complete. No. You know, and I, at Ileros, for example, we do the Amala with. Um, seafood okra, lobster okra, right? But the amala that we do, we cook it with seafood stock and then we add shredded crab to it. So there's creativity in food and that's what I really love about okay, it. Okay, so what are your other favorites? It. Other favorites, um, outside of Nigerian food, I'm a huge, like, um, Italian lover. So I love my pasta. pasta. I'm a, I especially love seafood pasta. I'm always under this illusion that with seafood pasta, it's not as unhealthy. Especially if I do a tomato version. But mm. I do like the creamy one too. Um, what else do I like? I like a Thai beef salad. When I'm trying to be healthy, the, one of the nicer salads that I do like is the thigh beef salad. Um, what else do I like? 
Uh, lasagna. I do love lasagna. As much as I had lasagna <laughs> on Sunday. Oh really? Yeah, yeah. I can't my remember. Mom, I think my I had mom that, like, loves lasagna as well, so she she made sure that we had las we made lasagna. So we did lasagna. How? What do you um, eat to your lasagna? I think that's garlic what with bread. vegetable. Yeah. So, uh, Mediterranean salad. Yeah. So I normally have my lasagna with garlic bread on the side, okay. and I top it with a lot of basil. I love basil, which is fresh basil. Yeah. Really good. Um, another thing that I like is also like uh, I like curries, right? So I like. A Thai curry, like a nice Thai green curry or a coconut curry. Yeah. Mm. Those are some of my With these few of ours, we hope we've been able to convince <laughs> and not confuse you that you need food in your life. Yes. And I'm going to stalk you for my food, but you've succeeded in making me Just hungry. come and find me at Ilea. I will come and find you. Like <laughs> <laughs> to enjoy more of this, our Ugonke videos when you just watch, press this button to subscribe on top of our YouTube page. You go love her.